Well, hello there, blade lovers. OG Blade reviews with you once again, and something a little different. So if you're a blade lover, you may also like impact weapons. Something less than lethal in most cases. Something small and light to carry with you as kind of a last ditch get off me defensive sort of an item and in most cases ain't going to cut anybody and uh, ain't going to cause uh, too much of a mess but uh, may very well cause <clears throat> a lot of discomfort and pain on any assailant <laughs> got four things on the table here i was going to start off with uh, just this little item from tucson but um, I said, well, I don't think we're going to get too far with just uh, that one little item. So I decided to include a few more. And that is the EDC 24 by Tucson. We'll talk about that in a minute as we kind of go through uh, all of these here on the table. They're all impact devices. They all come from different companies and uh, have in a sense, different purposes, uh, different carry methods and so forth. You can see three of them have rings, one does not because one is a pen. And we're going to start off with this guy. This is an EDC pen from none other than Topps Knives. And uh, it's got a name. You can see that it does say Topps Knives on there. And I think it's simply the Topps Pen. If you know that it has a special name that I didn't uh, mention, please let me know in the comments. It's got a very nice uh, retention device here with a Kydex scabbard for it. You uh, carry it around your neck, probably the most convenient place to carry it. It's on a ball chain so that uh, if you're worried about somebody strangling you with it, uh, this should snap and release before any amount of pressure uh, occurs that might cause you some harm. Uh, so, but there is enough strength on the chain to be able to pop that free and use it either to fill out documents, sign your name, and it's actually got a space pen style uh, refill in it. I think it's refillable. There's a little uh, doohickey on the end there. I haven't tried taking it out. Seems like a pretty long refill, so it should last you quite a while. And these are only about 15 or 20 bucks, I think. I got this at the local gun store. Uh, it's made out of some sort of a resin. They come in this um, desert tan or a black, your choice. And if you can't find them locally somewhere, you could probably find it on Amazon. You could probably find it uh, directly from Tops. And uh, you got a nice place to cap your thumb here, uh, obviously jabbing with the uh, ballpoint. But if you didn't want to do that, uh, you could certainly hold it this way, but you can't cap it because of the uh, exposed, exposed uh, pen end. Okay. But I heard that Topps has tested these, uh, punching them through sheetrock repeatedly without any damage. Now, whether or not that's damage to the body of it or whether it's damage to the um, the, uh, the pen part, I'm not sure. I don't know how much uh, abuse this tip can take. Maybe it's pretty strong. Being a space pen, you're supposed to be able to write with it underwater, upside down, and uh, in uh, environments where uh, the pressure from the inside of the cartridge actually helps the ink come out. And it writes quite nicely, actually. There's some little paper. I usually use the paper for uh, cutting, but we'll just use the paper, yeah, for writing. Very smooth, very nice and smooth. Sign your John Hancock with that or something else. Any of these uh, items, too, if you're familiar with the tactics for it, you can do things such as uh, compliance and uh, squeezing fingers and, you know, that kind of thing. So moving on from there, let's put this guy back. Again, that's the Topps made pen. We're moving on to something from Volpe's Training. 
you know Volpe's because they make all of those very cool replicas of live blades, all kinds of impact weapons, all kinds of swords, sticks, staffs. I mean, uh, that's up in Rochester, New York, and they are just knocking it out of the park, doing some really tremendous stuff out of this uh, plastic sheet stuff. It's kind of a... Um, not sure the name of the plastic. I know lately he's gotten into some uh, some rods of different materials and so forth. Can't think of the name of that material, but it's a lightweight plastic, very hard. And this is called the third hand. Now that's a concept from Filipino martial arts, meaning that uh, your third hand is uh, something that you put in the hand not holding the primary weapon uh for use of um, assistance to that weapon and uh, <clears throat> usually you can also use the hand as well as the uh, the main weapon i won't get too into it and why it's the third hand not the second hand and so forth but uh, those of you that study the filipino martial arts are familiar with that i embellished this a little bit you're not going to get yours through this way i embellished it with a little of the uh this gun grip sort of material that uh, adheres very, very well. And because this material is kind of slippery and waxy by nature, I wanted just a little more grip. And uh, usually on the longer uh, weapons that uh, Volpe's turns out, he will uh, wrap it with uh, jute cord. So uh, you get a really nice grip from that cord, and that cord is also soaked in epoxy. But this is interesting. I carry this in a little uh, side pocket, kind of a tool pocket on either my shorts or my pants. Uh, they'll fit in the 511 pocket pretty well, I'm sure. You could put your keys through there, but I'm not a big fan of uh, mounting your keys on anything that you're going to use uh, as an impact weapon because those keys just really get in the way and they whack your hand all over the place. So I like it clean just the way that it is. Plenty big hole here. And uh, you've got impact both this way as well as forward as well as from the top. Really, really nice. <clears throat> Doesn't really look too menacing because of the shape of it and a little bit of a curve there but uh, works extremely well in the way that it was designed. Um, no real need to spin it. I mean, the finger is used as uh, for security, basically, and for positioning. I find that it drops right into my hand perfectly, just the way that it is. And that's your primary downward or outward striking portion. Again, this, um, see if I can back out a little bit. Yeah. This uh, can be used from the side, from this side, if you're familiar with the uh, knife techniques of the eight and the nine angles, uh, or it's a reinforced knuck. And uh, yeah, it, it talks. Mainly these weapons are all designed, you don't want to hit somebody in the gut with this. Uh, it's not going to work that well. You want to hit the bonier parts of the back of the hand, the back of the arm, um, nose, forehead, uh, temples, uh, even legs and tops of knees, ribs, and uh, all the uh, parts of the body that aren't protected with a lot of flesh. So uh, that is the third hand from Volpe's. Uh, check Volpe's out. Uh, they got a, quite an Instagram presence. It'll direct you to their website. And uh, I'll leave names of all four of these uh, in the comments so that you can hopefully either link to them or at least know the name so you can look them up yourself. Here is something from a company called Radops. I picked this up at uh, Tactical Elements. I believe they're a Florida-based uh, knife and uh, you know defensive weapons uh, shop, online uh, store. Uh, this is called the Daniel. I don't know why. Maybe that's the owner or somebody who invented it. CQCT Pro. Um, why they put the double heat treat, uh, big and sharp edges. I don't know why that's on there. It's a Korean company, South Korean. And uh, this is all titanium. 
It's uh, not cheap. They're coming in around 80 bucks, I think, at least. Got a clip for your pocket. This also can simply be dropped all the way down into a uh, side tool pocket. And uh, I've done a review, uh, an independent, I mean, individual review on this in the past. So uh, this can certainly be used this way. And you're going to get a lot of pinpoint force. It's nice that they rounded it nicely. You try not to break the skin with these things and cause a mess. And, you know, blood pathogens and so forth still being an issue these days. You, you want to try not to uh, do that. Um, lots of portions on this that can be used. You've got the, the finger grooves there. Fits nicely in the hand. But you've also got these two uh, ears up here that can be used for delivering force this way. It can be used to deliver force this way, right? And I think this may also be a cap lifter. I'm not sure what the dimension is, whether it'll fit that. Uh, you know, don't try it with that one. That's plastic. <laughs> but your primary uh, impact points here will be these two and this one right here. You can use this as a compliance device as well. If you're familiar with those techniques to use on the fingers, thumbs, uh, even on the wrist, if you know what you're doing. And that's a whole other, that's a whole other lesson. We're not doing martial arts lessons here today or defensive tactics lessons, but we're showing you these interesting implements. Again, uh, it's a hardened titanium, as he says, double heat treat. And uh, sharp edges, um, really not sure whether that's a warning for you or what. We've got even a little bit of uh, kind of uh, grooves built into the clip here. Whether or not that can be used uh, for compliance, I'm not sure. It's an interesting implement. It's fairly lightweight and easily carried. This looks less like a weapon than this one. So if you're trying to get through TSA or something, definitely that's going to be more your style. Uh, I wrote the owner of Volpe's, and I'm sorry if I forget his first name, but uh, he is a practitioner of Piquiti Tercia Kali, and um, he kind of designs his stuff around the uh, martial arts, uh, Filipino martial arts uh, styles that he teaches and that he uh, practices. But, uh, you know, he said he's actually carried this through TSA without any problem. I wouldn't put the grip tape on there. It makes it look a little too much like a weapon, but um, it, it really doesn't look too much like a weapon, but I'll leave that up to you. I'm not giving out any legal advice here. <laughs> Finally, as I said, this is something by Tucson that I got fairly recently. I've been meaning to do a review on it alone. It is the EDC-24. Of course, they don't give names to much of their stuff, but this is kind of a nook, okay? So it's designed to be held this way, right? Very comfortable and uh, nicely reinforced to be held that way. Uh, striking, but also uh, kind of gouging and twisting. Uh, there is one that's made by the Radops company that they call the Beetle, something or other Beetle. And this sort of has those Beetle pincers there. Uh, also, I think it is a cap lifter. Yep. I'm pretty sure it's a cap lifter, so you can uh, definitely open those beers if they don't have twist caps or even if they do. <laughs> Sign of manhood to open with a, a cap lifter, of course, as we all know. <laughs> uh, fits nice in the hand for the middle knuckle, probably not so much for the first knuckle. I definitely would use it there. And uh, two grooves on the side for the side fingers get a good grip on it, and definitely it's going to improve the performance of your punch. Uh, you're going to have these two rounded heads hitting this way, but again, you can also corkscrew and have these little guys picking up flesh, and uh, yeah, could be uh, definitely a compliance thing, uh, definitely on a finger, <laughs> for sure. Well, there's all four of my little uh, impact devices today. Uh, hopefully you like this diversion from the edged items and implements and weapons that we usually show on OG Blade Reviews. 
let me know what you think. And uh, again, I'll try to leave links in the comments to each of these so you can check them out. Be well, take care, and don't forget to give this vid a like. Subscribe right over here. There you go. Click on it.